Hi, this is Pam, Pamela Gropi Art, and today we are going to paint these two lemons quick and easy. So please, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and or hop on over to my website where I have more free, easy painting tutorials just for you. Let's go ahead and get started on our lemons. Now, many times when I'm doing a design, I like to start the leaves that are going to be in the background first. And this is no different. I'll go ahead and run through these leaves really quick. Um, this is also a, a tutorial on my how to paint leaves tutorial and video, which has many. Now, when I'm painting a design like this, I'm not going for realistic looking leaves. I'm going for an effect. So if anyone says, well, those don't look like lemon leaves, don't worry about it. They may not. This is just fun and we're not going with exact. Now this is my scalloped leaf. Now I went, I started with the two colors. One is citrus green and one is thicket green. I use these two colors for my leaves frequently. You can use the two colors of green that you prefer, a darker and a lighter that are far enough apart in value that they really stand out next to each other, meaning the light and the dark, the light and the dark. I started this scallop leaf with the light green on the outside, the dark green on the inside. And then I just came over here, the light green is on the inside, the dark green is on the outside. I like doing my leaves that, that way because it makes a pronounced seam and gives the, sh the leaf some shape. Others do it differently, but that is how I do my scallop leaves. Now you notice I try to do it right on the edge of the lemon. I got a little bit over the little nub of the lemon there. I will take care of that later. So I'm going to turn my piece slightly so that I am comfortable and I'm going to do another leaf slightly overlapping the current leaf. And I'm just going to do the scalloped leaf again. And you can do maybe a little vine with some slider leaves if you want. This is totally optional. You notice mine are not perfect. I'm not worrying about it. This is fun. We don't have to be perfect. So I'm going to turn my piece again and I'm going to add a couple more leaves. Now on the pattern here, I'll show you. I have a few leaves drawn in there. You can put your leaves wherever you like. You don't have to put them on there via the pattern. Go with what you want to do. Now I'm just going to Now the, these two are the multi-surface colors. You could also do these with the regular plaid folk art colors. I think they have both those colors also, the citrus green and the, I know they have the thicket and the regular folk art. The sheen is just different. I'm just gonna go over this a little bit because I got two tips. You don't want two tips, you want one tip. All right. And you just clean it up a little bit. Now, sometimes on a surface, you'll have to go over the green twice because it won't come out opaque, and that's okay too. I'm just going to go along and create some more leaves here. And maybe I'll just do a little, I better make sure I got a chisel edge to do the vine here. A little curly vine and some slider leaves. Just lightly brush in. You don't even worry about connecting the uh, veining to the stem. It's just all for effect and it all just kind of works together. No one's going to say, hey, wait a minute, those veins do not connect. It's just an effect. Relax and enjoy. So many people get so tied up in being tight and in their painting rather than just enjoying it. It all comes together. If you're a perfectionist and need to take a liner brush, and just connect them later if you want that effect. Okay, so now where these have dried, let me see if they're dry yet, not completely. You would like for the green to dry because if you overlapped your lemon with the green, 
you'll want to use some white. And I don't have any white out. This is wicker white. I use wicker white a lot. This is this is the regular and not the multi-surface. I use the two together all the time. Doesn't matter because with most of my pieces, I will coat with a satin uh, varnish or um, it's actually a verithane and it um, creates the final finish. So whether or not your paint is satin or matte, it does not matter. So right here where I said the nub of the lemon got painted over with green. You see I make it, I just overlay it with some white. Now what that does for me is it puts the leaves to the back. You are welcome to paint your lemons first, come back and paint your leaves. But I like the way that this creates, makes them seem like they're in the background rather than sitting on top of the lemons. I'm just kind of following the line. Now with yellows and reds and some oranges, they are not opaque. So having a dark line for your pattern is not really a good thing. I just wanted to make sure you saw it here and could follow it. So here, this one, you notice how that leaf, now that might not be dry, so I'm going to drag it accidentally. No, it should be dry, but I just, I don't want to wait. And you see how it still shows through? I may have to go over that again. If I want the yellow there not to show the green underneath. Now, you can pretend that that's like a shadow there, so it wouldn't be a big deal to have the green showing beneath. So I'm just getting the white all on there. Now you'd want to undercoat with a white if you are painting on a dark surface because the yellows being not opaque, they will be dulled by the underneath color. So this white undercoat makes it where they will be bright and vibrant. Now I'll show you one I did. Here is one I did and I shared this on Instagram. And this is another one I did. And you notice how they're very, they're rather different. I used the same colors, but kind of in a different way. Now, I was just practicing then and seeing what I liked best, and um, I just got a feel for it. One I like better than the other, and when I had a comparison test on Instagram and Facebook, I had kind of an equal vote for each one. Some people liked the right one best, some people liked the left. So it's really a matter of preference, and I cannot guarantee that this one will look exactly like either one of those. Every time I paint something, I learn something new and it creates a unique, I am, each one is unique. So there's never two alike. So don't get frustrated if your lemons don't look like my lemons. That's what I'm trying to tell you with all of that. Okay, so here I am going with daffodil yellow and just maybe a touch of moon yellow on the outer edges. Now. The moon yellow on the outer will give it just a little bit of um, a shadowing or a darker edge there. The daffodil yellow is a very bright, bright yellow, and I like that. But you notice how the moon yellow gives it a little bit of depth of color along the outside. And you notice how the green underneath there is still showing. And I drug a little green into my yellow. I don't mind that. There is, a, many times, there is some green on your lemons. So here we'll continue on around the outside with a double loaded. I double loaded my brush. I hope you saw that in the camera here. Double load, blend it in. I'm trying to get more of the daffodil yellow in my brush rather than moon yellow. I want the moon yellow to be fairly narrow, and then I follow the outline. You notice a little nub out there on the end. I uh, tweak that little area. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm not going to rinse it. I don't need to rinse it. So I'm just going to wipe it off. And I'm going to go into just all 
the daffodil yellow and I'm going to just fill in the center loosely and then I'm going to go in that white and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight just tap it in blend it a little bit and there we're all good now there's kind of a harsh stark line between the moon yellow there and that highlight just kind of tap along and blend and now I'm going to go I'm going to get into that little bit of that moon yellow and I'm just going to kind of go along the outline and it all kind of blends together and if you can see right there you can see the dark outline through the yellow paint that's why I don't like having a dark outline I try to make them as light as possible if I'm going to be working on a yellow project or something that the the um, undercolor will actually show through. All right, so here's this lemon. Now over here on my palette, let me see if you can see this, I want a color called goldenrod. Now that's a little bit darker or different color, and maybe I should go, instead of goldenrod, I think I should go with some yellow ochre. Now what I'm gonna do with the yellow ochre is I'm gonna create a little bit of a shadow where this lemon overlays this lemon. I'm not going to re I'm not going to wipe my uh, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to wipe it out again just like I did before. And I'm going to get a little bit of the moon yellow and some of that yellow ochre and I'm going to blend it in. Just blend it in and I'm just going to follow the outline there of the upper lemon as if it's creating a shadow on the lower lemon. Just like that. Then I'm going to wipe my brush out again on a dry towel and then I'm going to go into the daffodil yellow and I'm going to blend that in here. Now I'm on paper so it's really sucking up the paint and it's not staying as wet as it would on a painted surface or a wood surface. And I'm going to do the double load of the daffodil and the moon yellow. And I'm going to do like I did and follow the outline of the lemon. Now no two lemons are exactly like you see how the leaf doesn't isn't touching there. So let me I didn't follow that line all the way, so go along. Now I'm going to go into the white and kind of tap in some highlight. I still have too much of that golden on there. I don't want that. So wipe off my brush, add that little bit of white. I can go into what I also have. You don't have to have this as lemon custard. It's a little bit lighter of a yellow. And then I could look at it. and see what I think. I think this needs to be blended in a little bit more, so I'm going to go into the moon yellow and the daffodil yellow. And I'm just going to kind of go over that. Because of the lack of opacity, that shadow is going to show through without being so stark. So you see how the shadow is showing? And there's basically your lemons. So you see how it's got the little bit of shadow there to show that it's laying over top. I think I want to shadow my leaves as well. And that's where the dark green, I mean the green meets the yellow. So what I'm going to do is make myself a little bit of a shadow color. Um, Plaid used to make a color that I love to shadow leaves with and it was called... Um, green umber. I don't know that they make it anymore, but basically I think it was a little bit of burnt umber with some green. But what I'm doing is I have a little touch of brown. This is real brown. I've also used Van Dyke brown. And you just want a touch. And you want to mix it with your thicket. See my thicket here? And there's the Van Dyke, uh, the real brown. And I'm going to mix it. Make a darker green. Get a little bit more in there. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off because I want, just want to get a little bit of that color 
on the corner of my brush with some floating medium or blending gel. And I'm just going to kind of go along the base of it and around where this leaf goes over top of that leaf. And you see how it creates just a hint of darkness there. I'm kind of at an odd angle doing this one over here, so let's see if I can get it without being... And I'm going to follow along that leaf edge. And I got kind of out there, but that's okay. It's a wonky leaf. Now you have to be careful that you don't pick up the color that's beneath. Now let it be. Let me see if I can... Let it be, and you can add more later. A lot of times shadowing should be done maybe in layers, and that way you can make sure not overdo it. Also, I mean, I have a color called Asphaltum. I, I can't find it here. That makes a good shadow color, too. Um, I'm going to see some. Now, this is not something I have. I did on the other lemons. I was just going to see if I could shadow beneath the lemons with some yellow ochre and see what that would look like to create a shadow. Playing around is not a bad thing. I don't know if that was too close in color to the edge of the lemon, so it made it look Probably. Probably needs to be a little bit darker, like do the brown instead. Like I said, I'm not recommending this. I'm just playing. And it just shows how you can play around for effects and see what you want to do. Now this was just a little bit of that real brown mixed in with some floating medium. On the corner of my brush. And there you basically have some lemons. Now if you wanted to, you check back and you can... Oh, I did something on my other ones that I... I don't know if you want to do or not, but I did a little bit of fly specking where I did, you know, splashed a little bit of color on there. And I can't remember, I think, which video I had that in. But I could do that for you. One moment. So this is the small scruffy brush that you get in the 10-pack of brushes. And I loaded it with inky yellow ochre. So inky, I just got it real wet and load it. Now, most of the time I usually do this with a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and it really works well. But I thought I'd grab this and see. And I'm just flicking the color on there. And you make the fly specks. Can you see the fly specks on there? I'll do a little bit of brown. Or maybe, uh, maybe I'll do green. Add a little green to it and see. Now it's just inky, not too much because it'll make big glops. I think I have too much paint in here, so I may take, but, and you just kind of drag it across there and you see the little fly specks it makes. And there you have some detail that just adds a little bit to your lemons. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, easy painting lesson on painting some lemons. And again, as I said before, no two lemons will turn out exactly alike. And just enjoy the process. I wish you happy painting.